Hello everyone, Astrochemistry here. Under our last video, R. Johnson has posted a very nice comment. First of all, let me thank you for your kind words. Really appreciate it. He is asking for ways to obtain pure capsaicin from an extract of chili peppers. Since this would be a very nice example for a separation problem in organic chemistry, we are going to make a video about it. In the first part, let me explain you the general thought process when addressing any kind of separation problem in organic chemistry. In the next part, we are going to look at the more general approach of separating compounds based on their properties. So the first step in any separation problem is to take a look at the molecule that you want to separate from the other ones. So in this case I have already drawn the structure of capsaicin. Now let's take a look at the functional groups that are present. We can see that capsaicin is first of all an amide. That means that it is hydrolyzable under either acidic or basic conditions at elevated temperature. Next, we see that it, it is olefinic, that means it contains double bond. We can also see that it is aromatic and it has a phenol group attached to it. Now, let's take a look at the other molecules that would be present in this extract. This is carotene alpha. Carotene is a terpene. So you can see that it is a compound of purely carbon and hydrogen. It is not aromatic and the on only functional group that is present are double bonds. And by the way the nice color of carotenes comes of course th from the conjugated double bonds that can absorb light easily. Furthermore, fatty acids will be present in the extract. So generally, fatty acids are just esters of glycerol, which has the following structure. and a fatty acid which in general looks like this where R is a long chain of aliphatic carbon for example C10 or C14 sometimes containing double bonds so fatty so um, fatty acids esterified with glycerol would just give compounds that would look like this.
So we can see that the only functional group present is the ester group right here. Now this is the first step in the thinking. Now we have to use our knowledge about the reactivity and about the properties of the molecules in order to propose a solution to the separation problem. So what we want to do is separate a highly functionalized molecule from an aliphatic molecule and from fats. It is clear that in performing a succinate extraction all of these compounds are going to be extracted. So you have to think about what different reactivities these molecules have. Now for the sake of this thinking, let us assume that we have no access to separation methods like column chromatography and more advanced methods. Let us assume that this is performed in an amateur lab with limited access to those modern separation techniques. So when taking a look at capsaicin, we should realize that a phenyl group is present. A phenyl is nothing more than an hydroxy group attached to a benzene ring. And you might know that phenols are acidic compared to normal alcohols because the negative charge can be delocalized around the benzene ring. So when attempting to separate capsaicin from these other aliphatic molecules, we realize that only capsaicin will show an acid-base reaction. Because the other molecules are not going to be protonated or deprotonated under reasonably mild reaction conditions. So we could separate capsaicin from these other molecules like follows. First of all, let us assume that we have this oily extract from fresh from the chili peppers. Now we would add some diethyl ether, for example, so that everything goes into solution in the ether. Everything is reasonably nonpolar, so everything should dissolve in the ether. So let me attempt to draw this. So we just have a beaker. Diethyl ether and all of these molecules that we have just talked about dissolved in here. Now let's add some water. We would form a biphasic mixture since water and ether are mixable only to a small extent. Since all the molecules are very nonpolar, the molecules would stay in the ether layer and we have not achieved a separation. So the key step is to change the polarity of the molecule. Now what happens 
if you use the acidity of the phenol present in the capsaicin. So let us assume that we add one molar sodium hydroxide solution. The sodium hydroxide is strongly basic and would deprotonate the capsaicin. So we would get the negatively charged phenolate anion and sodium as counter ion. This is a salt and its polarity has greatly increased. That means when we take a look at our mixture now, we still have our water layer on the bottom and our diethyl ether on top. However, the deprotonated capsaicin would be more soluble in the water. So, using a separatory funnel and vigorous shaking, we could extract the capsaicin into the aqueous layer. In practice, you would transform you would tra transfer the mixture into a separatory funnel and you would drain off the aqueous layer into a separate vessel and you would then wash the diethyl ether three or four times with your one molar sodium hydroxide solution. So now we have achieved the separation of the capsaicin from the other molecules using the acid base reaction of capsaicin. So now you have your aqueous layer containing sodium hydroxide and your deprotonated capsaicin with, with the phenolate anion. Now, simply upon adding hydrochloric acid let's say one molar hydrochloric acid, you would protonate the capsaicin, thus decreasing its polarity since it is no longer a salt. In this way, you would get a precipitate of capsaicin and the slower you add the hydrochloric acid, the more pure it is going to be since it has time to precipitate slowly so that no contaminants are enclosed. Now you have reasonably pure capsaicin and you can wash it and crystallize it.